does resign, he won't get in trouble? Does he serve any purpose for that? I just don't know enough about it. No, he said, I just don't know. Uh, I think, though, he ought to resign. And, of course, he never, they, Bobby never did deliver the votes. Bobby was a Kerr man and was a Johnson man and, and was not in this uh, coterie. And so they never could find out what's happening there. And they couldn't move their bills. It wasn't really Bobby's fault. Bobby tried to help. But they couldn't move their tax bill until Kerr got ready to move it. And they couldn't move other things until people got ready. And uh, uh, so they never did really move any legislation until I came in. But they were laying it on him. This Carmine, whatever his name is, he has done a good deal of that, and I believe now that he is doing it privately for our friend, for your your, your friend's client. That, uh, that, that fellow who's an accountant? Yeah. He was with the McClellan Committee. He's a chief wiretapper, and my evening reports show that he is accumulating the best wiretappers in New York, private ones, and putting them on his payroll now. Well, I had one encounter with him, and... It was about as distasteful an experience as I've had in Well, he is busy at the private act now, maybe taking this conversation. I saw a memo last night, and you're the man, the enemy, the other side. He's aware of everything. Uh -huh. I say the uh, you're, you're, you're the, man, the, uh, the other principal yeah. uh, that they want me to talk to. Yeah. He is aware of all this. I get a report on him in the night reading everything. <laughs> but Carmine is busy with uh, employing these folks. And one of them was a big one that did a lot in New York, and he's recently gone to work for him. And I think he's doing some foundation work, maybe, uh, for the uh, Kennedy Foundation or the library. <laughs> they they kind of want a history of this stuff, I guess, <laughs> how it originated. So. But anyway, that's what's going on. So I don't have uh, much influence with him, and uh, he's never talked to me about it, except when I sent for him after failing to get the job done in 63 and skipping 64. In 65, I just uh, kept hearing it, and they were calling me and raising hell about it. So I called uh, Katzen back and uh, the other fellow over. And much to my surprise, because you and Abe and all of my friends had never had entertained a very high opinion of this fellow. Uh, and you remember we talked about it time and two. Uh, and you just spoke very positively, and so did Abe, and so did uh, Harry MacPherson, and so did Bill, everybody around me. But I called him over there, and it was a shock of my life. He said, uh, I don't think we ought to be doing this. I think we ought to in case of the highest national security. I don't know what is that and what isn't. That's up to Secretary of State and the Attorney General. But I don't want it done except by their specific direction with their personal uh, uh, consideration of it after they have determined the national security element. I never have wanted to do it. I think it's a mistake to do it. I wish I had never done any of it, and uh, so on and so forth. And Nick had to become the advocate and the justif justifier for it. When I listened to both of them, I said, I agree with, the, with the Edgar, and I don't want any of it done. And I just wish you wouldn't do it, by God, in what you consider a great security case. And I sure don't want it done unless you personally look over it, Nick, Unless you study it yourself, unless you meet the Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense, and uh, uh, they conclude that the national safety is endangered if you don't do it. But I don't want any of this bugging. I don't give a damn whether it's legal or illegal. I just don't want any more of it done. And you go back, and Hoover just said, I agree with you. I just sure don't want it. And it, uh, it, I just couldn't believe it. But the, the, the liberal took the the other position, and uh, and uh, Edgar took the Civil Liberties position, and he thought he's a member of the Civil Liberties Union. Now, maybe he was prepar maybe he's preparing his defense, but they went back and they drew up an order. It came over, and it wasn't worth a damn, but he and Lee White messed around and argued, and finally I signed it. It was watered down, and Abe and them think it demonstrates intent mighty well but uh, they can evade it every way they wanted to. 
But anyway, I issued it and gave a press statement on it and made a speech to the Internal Revenue fellows and called Cohen over and told him if I ever caught him tapping one wire or putting one bug in, I want him to resign. All right, fine, him forthwith. And I've done the same thing with Ramsey Clark and, and with the, the FBI people. Now, that is the only conversation I've ever had with Hoover. I don't feel like I'm in a position to talk to him. But here's what's happened on that front. Uh, uh, three nights ago at Sarge Schreiber's house, Bill Moyers and uh, uh, Joe Califano and some of them were out there. And uh, Makowitz, who is a public relations man for uh, the senator, called, uh, got a call from the senator. And the senator was very agitated and very upset. I didn't know he ever got that way. But uh, I guess he's close enough to the president said he wants to get prepared. <laughs> the fella has to. So he told him that uh, this was very bad and for him to get in touch with California and tell California right away that it had to be stopped and I could stop it. So California told me sure I couldn't and sure I wouldn't, but uh, he's glad to have the message. The next day, Dick Goodwin called and said that he was authorized to tell Bill Moyers that if the president didn't go into this thing and put a stop to it, that the senator had told him to tell him that by God he was declaring war. So you can imagine how that happy that made me feel. So Bill talked to me, and I told him I didn't think it'd be appropriate for the president to be trying to fix something. But what the question had come to me now was that they'd sent a man over from the State Department who worked for Nick to rifle the files of the Justice Department at night and with one of Bobby's ex-assistants, and they'd gone in and got an order issued in 62 that was really irrelevant. Yeah. But it fuzzed it up some, and they'd stolen it and, and taken it over and leaked it to Harwood of the Washington Post and then demanded a press conference and then asked for the order, and the public affairs man told him they didn't give him out, so Harwood jumped up and jerked it out of his hip pocket and said, you won't deny this is it. Hmm. And there was a, a Xerox of it. And I said, I just don't think we ought to be stealing files out. That's too much like the Dodge stuff, and I don't... I don't, I don't think that ought to happen, but uh, uh, if uh, they're going to do it, I imagine this fellow is going to answer him with a memo now and then, because he, he doesn't have to steal them, he's got them. And uh, if they're going to be releasing them, I imagine he would release them. But anyway, it's something I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to get close to it. And if I did, I think that the fellow would release my conversation the next day and say I tried to stop him. And uh, I just... Uh, Afraid of it. So Bill called Dick Goodwin and told him. him that he didn't think his wise to take it up with the president. That the president couldn't do anything about it if he wanted to. But that he doubted the wisdom of Senator Kennedy, and Bill has been going pretty close to Senator Kennedy. There's talk that they've got a deal on, and I, I think there's some basis for it. Uh, but he has, uh, uh, that he felt that, uh, Senator Orton to be calling up the White House and saying he's declaring war, and that if he wanted that message delivered to the president, that the president's phone number was number one, Johnson City, and he would always take any call from the senator. Or if he wanted to write it, he'd mark it eyes only, and he would be the only one to see it, but that he did not recommend it. But if they wanted him to deliver a message to the president, he would do it. Yeah. But he, he, he knew the man's personality, and he didn't think it was advisable. So he said, well, he'd have to check with his principal. He came back and checked and said that he'd decided that he wouldn't go it this way. He'd pursue it another way. So I assume that this is the other way he's pursuing it. the other way, I guess. Well, I, uh, <clears throat> my own reaction to it is that it isn't anything that you can touch with a hundred-foot pole. You're not in it. You're not a part of it. If two individuals who are having some dispute among themselves as to who told who to do what, and it, uh, it's got to be handled in such a manner that uh, uh, on the Hill, it, uh, it doesn't prejudice uh, our position with a lot of our friends. They'd understand that pretty well up there. But, I agree with the statement you made that 
any kind of action on your part, uh, by time uh, it would be portrayed, uh, <laughs> the motives would be suspect, there'd be some charge, and there was some kind of a cover-up going on. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's something entirely outside of the area in which you could become involved. I think you could very well say that you sure are do you, you think you can speak confidently that uh, it is distressing to me to see uh, an order issued to release l one morning and a memo the next morning about the government in these things as it is to any of the principals involved, that I just don't happen to be the man that's issuing them. And that it's not, uh, not something that uh, I can really do very much about. I've been very since Ickes was tapped the telephone wire back under the, my, my, the man that, uh, that was my mentor and my guiding light and sent me through college, resigned as undersecretary because Ickes was tapping some uh, uh, PWA man's wire. Uh, I have been rather nutty on the subject. And so I think it... Uh, we ought to say we don't want to promote it. We do agree that it is bad to be trying to get in public. We do think that anything that uh, divides uh, the Democrats is bad, <laughs> particularly these television hearings <laughs> and these other things. But uh, 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 we think that if we tempted that, it would be very explosive and that we have no real contact and uh, we... Uh, I doubt that I could have as much influence with him as he would have. I asked one question at one stage, and that was whether or not uh, uh, the other lawyer's client had uh, ever thought that he might go uh, sit down with uh, the local man and yeah. talk it over with him. And see if they couldn't reach some uh, understanding about what was right for the public and what was wrong for the public and what was good for the country and what was wrong for the country. And he said, well, no, he hadn't uh, really considered doing that. No, he didn't want to. He is very vicious toward him. He came to me several times, said, since you came in here, I've got no control over this fellow. This fellow just runs over here all the time. I said, he hasn't been here at all. I haven't talked to him. He's not saying anything about you. Well, he said, he's reporting on me all the time. I said, no, he's not at all. Uh, Bobby said that to me several times about the other fellow. He was very concerned about him all the time he was there. Well, I don't know uh, just what it is that uh, all your client uh, has to be concerned about, but uh, there's no doubt at all in my mind that there is a very real one of the things is he got his signature on a tap on Martin Luther King. That's been going on two, three, four years. And they started this February of 61 when they came in. And the Martin Luther King one is, uh, it, it, it'll make a better book in Manchester uh, if you read the taps. And, uh, I would think would really rock uh, a good many people. It's pretty hard to tie him in with the security of the nation. Well, I, I think what, uh, what I'll do is agree a bull up, wait a day or two, and just, uh, just call the fellow and just say that it is exactly as I have supposed. I think you can say to him that you think I'd be just as happy to see it stopped as anybody that I'm away and I'm down here. But you've talked to people that uh, uh, pretty well know the situation and there's no intimacy there and there's no contact there where uh, uh, he gets any direction or any orders from us. Uh, and we'd like to see the whole thing over with, the release of the, we thought when they released the 62 order, it was a mistake and because he'd have to answer it. And we thought
think that when one issues one, the other one has to answer it. It doesn't do any good. And we think that uh, they ought to put a stop to all these controversies. That's what the staff people think. But we think the staff people think that if they talk to the man, the man felt like he'd do anything, he'd be on the front page of the paper the next morning, he's trying to fix him. But he hadn't seen him. Only the last time he's had a visit with, with him, and er, 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 only time he's had a discussion was when he, Nick Katz and back came over and they issued the Order 65 and they issued it because Hoover said he didn't want this argument. Right. And I think I'd tell him that and say that, to, that you know that any if we do have a chance, any opportunity we do have, that we will certainly try to uh, cool the thing off. We have no desire for an investigation or hearing or, or to embarrass anybody. And uh, I think that's very good. Uh, that, uh, on the other hand, that uh, perhaps, uh, whether they believe it or not, perhaps uh, just the two men sitting together would have more effect than anybody else because 